Okay, guys. Today's the day we're going to change that distributor to the uh, Cool Tech one with the electronic points already installed. All right, so we're going to change the current distributor that I have in there, which has points in a condenser, over to the Cool Tech distributor with the electronic ignition already installed. So a couple things I use is I use a 30 millimeter wrench to turn my uh, pulley, get the engine in number one top dead center. And, you know, just various junk, screwdrivers, uh, socket wrench, etc. I always over tool. What I mean by that is I, by the end of this video, I'll probably have every tool I own out here on the floor. So uh, let's get to it. So we're gonna be working with this distributor. Um, it's a pretty safe thing to do. However, as I always say, whenever you're working on anything like this, I always like to remove that negative terminal, the battery, just so you don't get any surprises while you're uh, working. A nice big blue spark to the thumb hurts a lot. First thing we're gonna do is get the engine sitting at uh, number one top dead center so we can pull out the distributor and everything will be set up and we can make it, it's make it a lot easier to time and all that when we are all done. So on my pulley, I have the two notches that are on the back end that line up with the split in the crankcase. And I have previously, years and years ago, I have marked uh, where they are and also 180 degrees out um, so I can time my valves, etc. So all I do usually is I take my 30 millimeter and I just turn the crank over to line up at least one of these with this split case. And I don't know if you can see that, but uh, in this case, there are no notches in this side of the pulley. So this is uh, not the correct mark. I have to turn around uh, 180 degrees. One more time. Okay, so you can clearly see where I've marked uh, my notches and also my uh, mark for timing my, for doing my valve just, uh, adjustments. And all that lines up with that split on the crankcase. So now we can go and check the distributor to see and make sure that the rotor is pointing to the number one uh, cylinder spark plug wire. So as you guys can see, I marked um, on the actual distributor cap which spark plug wire goes to which cylinder and I did that a long time ago uh, I think when we were rebuilding this just because I like to put things back you know the right way and I have a bad memory so I marked them so I would remember now most of the time your number one cylinder is gonna be somewhere over here um, but what happened with us is when I rebuilt this motor uh, when we dropped in that distributor drive gear, it was off a little bit. So my number one cylinder actually ended up being back here. This is the number one cylinder wire right here. So um, usually it's, it's no big deal. It is a big deal when you first try to figure out why your car won't start. But then once you get your, your uh, engine at top dead center correctly and you realize um, where your rotor is pointing, then you know that that's your number one cylinder. So then you can just turn your distributor to that number one cylinder. Um, I hear that if it is in the correct spot, um, uh, Volkswagen engineers a long time ago ground the cam so that number three gets a little bit more cooling, this, that, the other. So it is kind of important to have it in that spot, but I don't do a lot of long distance driving. And um, I know it's incorrect, but I've run this way now probably for 
two, two and a half, maybe two years since I rebuilt the engine last time. So as such, I've just left it. So it's worked fine. If it ain't broke, you know, don't fix it. So the next step we have to do is to pop off this distributor cap. So let's pop it off here. Let me see if I can do it without blinding you guys. Boom, boom. And what do you know, look at this. The rotor is pointing pretty much directly to where that number one cylinder wire is. So anyway, move your rotor cap out of the way. Um, we've already disconnected the battery, so we have no problem in touching anything. So we're just gonna take the condenser wire off also while I'm sitting here. So now, okay, so now, <laughs> one thing to remember, you can get your timing all kind of out of whack and uh, it's possible to time this thing incorrectly and timing out, time it on the number three cylinder. So what you really ought to do is check your valves on the number one cylinder to make sure that in fact this is correct, your line is correct, and the third check is those valves. If your if your two valves uh, are clacking, there's no there's no pressure on them. And when you turn the engine a little bit, we'll put the wrench back on there. I'll show you when we get underneath there. And that number two cylinder um, valve is is rocking then you know you're at number one cylinder top dead center. All right. All right, so we got the valve cover off. Um, I don't know if you can hear it, but these two don't have any compression on them from the uh, push rods. And when I rock the engine, if you can see, that valve there, that's number two cylinder, is rocking. So that's how you know that number one cylinder is on top dead center, no compression. That's your third check. So this is the cool tech, uh, motor works that I got and uh, I like it because it's a uh, it's a vintage look but it has all the electronic ignition stuff in it get your directions and let's see uh, set your motor to top dead center which we've already done so it's gonna be uh, pretty straightforward after that um, there it is um, I unpacked this, I made a video of me unpacking this before, but we'll do it again. Um, it's pretty classy looking with the badge on it. Um, it comes with the brown, the old school looking brown uh, Bakelite simulating cap. This isn't Bakelite like the old ones were, but uh, also all it has inside instead of uh, the points of the condenser are is the electronic ignition, which we're going to hook up to uh, negative and positive once we drop this thing in there. All right, let's get to it. Okay, once this 10 millimeter wrench, or 10 millimeter uh, nut is loose for the clamp here, you should be able to just pull your distributor right out. So let's see. And out she comes. distributor has this keyway that sits inside the distributor uh, drive gear inside your engine and you can see that it is offset just a little bit this is the smaller side this is the larger side so that little offset when it's keyed in correctly and this this thing was turned to the number one cylinder that's how the engine is timed 
and those two things are correct. The engine is somewhere near number one top dead center and it should uh, fire. So it's very important not when you're in this position now, you have your gear out or your, your distributor out of that gear, not to bump or move the engine, not to rotate the crankshaft or anything <clears throat> until you get your new distributor installed. So you saw I was able to pull my distributor out of the clamp uh, without actually removing the clamp from the engine block. Um, and I'm pretty sure 90% of you guys will not be able to do that. You're going to have to remove this, this bolt or this nut that holds this clamp down to the uh, engine block to get the distributor out. That's just the way it is. So what I'm going to do, because I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to put my new distributor in there. <coughs> like that I'm going to remove this clamp and put it on the distributor outside the engine uh, that saved me a couple minutes of struggling uh, be very careful not to drop anything obviously down inside that distributor drive It'll probably set you up for a pretty bad day So here you can see that little offset drive that sits down inside the engine case. That's what turns your distributor uh, and keeps your engine uh, timed correctly, basically. So when that thing spins and the distributor is in the correct position, installed in the correct position and timed correctly, then the, the distributor knows when to fire off the sparks to your spark plug so your engine will run. That little offset drive that I showed you guys on the distributor end sits down inside there. So as you can see, I got my clamp installed on the cool tech. Uh, I'm just going to take a little bit of oil. Where's my oil? There we go. And put a little oil on that O-ring. Kind of help it down inside the engine case and we're going to uh, reinstall this thing all right so uh, I popped the cap off this thing and I looked it over before I noticed this but I thought I should point it out uh, this is a new company um, and in general this thing is, is pretty nice and it feels pretty beefy there is one part on the casing here that is a little imperfect. So much so that when you put the cap on, you can almost still see that. So <clears throat> we'll see how that uh, see how that relates. See if it holds up well uh, once it's installed. But anyway, let's let's start the installation process. So we know my number one cylinder is over here somewhere. So. We should be able to just pop this thing down. You should be able to feel when it's lined up and when it goes back down. Or not. So I got the thing in there. Um, it was a little interesting. I, I've never had to do that with the engine in the engine bay, so I wasn't able to get any downward pressure on it. So, and I'm not saying this is a good idea, and I'm not sure if I messed anything up, so don't listen to me. But I took this off. This is almost a straight shaft. I think it's in two pieces, but down to the gear. So I just tap lightly on that with my dead blow until the distributor seated because of that o-ring. That o-ring was new and stiff and I just had to get past that o-ring. Once I got past the o-ring I was able to seat the thing down and now let me put the rotor on you can see it's engaged in the gear because it won't turn anymore. So that, that thing right there is supposed to be firing at the number one cylinder. So now what you're going to do is put your clamp back on. Um, Tighten that up, uh, tighten the clamp hold down bolt, I should say. Don't tighten this down. 
Um, and then we're gonna turn this cap back on. Turn this until we get to the spot where the number one uh, cylinder was. And then we can tighten that down. Connect these guys up. And hopefully we are ready to fire her up. So stand by. Okay, so at this point I'm ready to put the wires, switch the wires over to the new distributor. Um, what I really ought to do is get a whole new set of wires. I haven't changed these wires in, in at least a couple, three years. Um, and I'll be doing that, but uh, as it stands right now, I don't have any of that stuff. So I'm just gonna put the coil wire, the main coil wire back on. And then I'm just gonna go. I know that this is number one. And so I previously have marked all of my cylinder wires. One, two, three, four. Um, so I'm just gonna transfer them over. There's one, four, three, and two. Which coincidentally, it's also the firing order of the Volkswagen air-cooled engine, 1432-1432. Um, so there it'd be. And the last step for this cool tech is to connect the black wire onto the negative from the coil. I'll put it there for now. I don't know if I'll leave it there, but I'll put it there for now. Okay, maybe not. I'll put it here. There we go. And then the red wire goes to the positive side of your coil. And I've got one more turn on the left. It's way in the back. All right. So briefly, that's the whole installation. I got the new distributor in, and I got all my wires hooked up, and I have the positive and the negative from the electronic ignition. The negative going to the, or well, the black wire going to the negative on the coil, and the, the red wire going to the positive side of the coil. Um, once again, the car is in time that number one cylinder top dead center. And that's it. You can see I'll put the valve cover back on. And we'll see if she, uh, I'll connect the battery back up. We'll see if she fires back up. Adjusted it uh, a couple times in between trying to start her. Um, I had to I had to loosen the clamp and turn it uh, to get it running, kind of sort of cool at idle. Uh, this is the spot that turned out to be the best, which I kind of like because this cool ass uh, cool tech badge is sticking right out, so everybody can see it. I like that. So. It's running fairly well. Uh, I'll leave it like that for a little while. See if I like it. Um, and if I have to change anything, I will change it later on. All in all, I'd say that this uh, installation of the Cooltech um, distributor is pretty straightforward. I like the quality of the unit. It is a heavy unit, it feels heavy, um, which I kind of like. 
And um, yeah, it was pretty straightforward. You follow the directions, uh, no big deal. I'm really looking forward to using the electronic ignition modules rather than the points and the condenser. So um, yeah, that's it. To do this uh, installation, all I needed was a couple screwdrivers, 10 millimeter, 13 millimeter socket. Um, and of course my lights that I use when I'm lighting up my area. And that's it. So I'll talk to you old men later. All right, peace.